Hi, folks. Hello. How's it going? It's going. How are you? About the same. Okay. Yeah. It's all good. Thanks for the drop off yesterday. Oh, you're most welcome. You know, it was funny. Um, my first two drop offs were Aurora and Chagrin Falls, and the other five of you. I swear it was five minutes between houses. You're all like in the same area. Lindhurst, Mayfield, South Lindhurst. I mean, really, all Lindhurst. So it's a lovely place. What's that? It's a lovely place to live. Yes. Well, I grew up in University Heights, so we were, you know, sort of neighbors ish. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah. How long have you been in Lindhurst? Forever or? Uh, no, this is our second home. I think about 20, 21 years. Tally was in the third grade when we moved from South Euclid over to Lindhurst. Ah, got you. Good morning, Pam. You don't have to unmute. I'm just saying hi. Letting you know I see you. You see. You, which there is I me. am. Pam, I couldn't Good remember morning. yesterday when we dropped off. Have you and I met? No, and I, when you left, I said, that was so dumb. We've never met. And I, I did the same <laughs> I thing. I was like, so. I was like, yeah, I had it not been COVID, I would have invited you in for something to drink and oh, eat. You are so sweet. Well, thank you. I, I, as I left, I was like, oh, I feel stupid. I'm, I'm just not, you know, I'm, I'm just running. I'm, I'm kind of in a groove, right? And I'm like, I don't think I've met her. She didn't look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm excited about this class. I'm I'm a crafty kind of person. Oh yay! Well, so yeah, it's I think fun to do something you've never done. Absolutely, and it's even fun to do stuff you have done. Um, so you know, hopefully there'll be some new stuff for you today. Um, if you haven't done anything with corks before, there'll be something new. So that's good. Okay. okay. Hi, Alyssa. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, Good morning, everyone. Back for another round. I, I know. Scare, I didn't scare her off. <laughs> oh, oh, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Get me more interested, if anything. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad. So everybody, um, you know, you don't have to be in the kitchen, but we are going to be boiling our corks. So I thought that um, meeting in the kitchen made some sense today. Um, so and you know we're going to be playing with dirt and stuff too but you saw how little dirt there is there's not much there it's a small pot um so you might also want a um i have been using a fork to to kind of help me plant and tap down the the soil so if you don't want to get your fingers if you don't want to get up to your knuckles in dirt um feel free to use a fork with your with your dirt All right, I'm going to mute for another second as people are still arriving and getting ready. I need to make some more tea. So I will be back shortly. Alyssa? Hi, it's Susan. Hey, how Susan. are you? Good, how, how are you? Max and Lily? They're good. I just got them set up downstairs for their, their class. Are they still growing their pea pods? I threw them out last week. They were growing really well but i tried to um make i thought they would grow into peas if uh we let them grow but they don't so um i needed to trim them and i i'm not good at remembering to water so they lasted longer than i thought they would <laughs> <laughs> that's great so we'll have to plant some more i've harvested mine two times and just sprinkled them on my salad they're quite uh -huh. refreshing. Oh, that's good to know. I think I have, I kept some other, um, we had a few more seeds. I got to figure out where I put them and we can plant them again mm -hmm. and just keep them in a smaller pot. I put them in a big one. And so, well, but they grew really nicely inside. They do. Yeah. And you yeah. have quite some space there where they were, their office space was amazing. Oh, for the kids. Yeah. That, well, that's in the basement. That doesn't get any light <laughs> where they were. <laughs> that's so a many different guys and interactive things. Yeah. They have a nice art area. They, um, 
which they didn't want to go to today. They were like, mom, you have the art class. You should go there. I'm like, I think I need right. to be in the kitchen this time. <laughs> Are you an artist? No. No. Oh. My mom, who, who is not in the picture anymore, she's, she's more of an artist than I am. Hi, mom. Hello. I'm Susan. Hi. It's nice Thank to meet you, you too. too. Susan uh, had Max and Lily in class la last semester, right? Oh. Was it last semester? Yeah. Yeah. Lucky yeah. you. <laughs> I had a number of, of um, kindergarten through third graders, like 11. I think we had fun. I hope your kids had fun. Grandkids yeah. had fun. Yeah, well, they, they like the hands-on stuff, so they love doing the um, planting and everything. Well, I hope um, you like planting too. <laughs> I do. I love gardening. Cool. This has a deck garden because the uh, animals get everything else. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even on a deck, they get the stuff. Well, we, we did something similar. Um, Ken got me for the holidays this year, he got me a um, one of those big planting boxes, you know, a raised planting box. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I'm going to do next year. I have some back and hip and knee issues, so I have a hard time kneeling um, and bending over for any period of time. And so I now have a box that I can plant everything in. Last year, I did it in five gallon buckets and I had um, amazing cherry tomatoes. They were so good. They were so much better than anything I buy in the store. Yep. Yeah, I love planting tomatoes. I, I have these things called earth boxes where they have their own watering system. So you put water oh. in it, stay at the bottom. Like hydro. And other, kind of, yeah, because I can't, our deck is direct sun all day and I can't um, keep up with the watering. It's, it's hard. So I found that I can get almost anything to grow in those boxes. <laughs> ah. If I don't have the box, oh. it's, you know, survival of the fittest on my deck. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. I'm just curious, you guys. I'm still trying to learn about screen sharing and stuff. Can you see that I'm doing something else here? I'm trying to print out an attendance sheet. Can you guys see that I'm doing this or not? No, so only like mid, mid chest up is what oh. I see. No, see no, no I didn't mean. I meant. Uh, can like you still see the, the slide? Yeah, we just see the slide. Okay, good. I always worry that when I'm multitasking like this, that I'm gonna get busted. So <laughs> I just busted myself, I guess, but yeah, you did. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. Um, we're going to just give a couple more minutes up. Oh, there's Ellen and let other people come and then we'll get started. Oh, let me get my saucepan. Do we plug in our um, glue guns now? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Hey, Deb. Deb. Was that Ellen or was that Susan? That was Lori. That was Lori. Oh, Lori. Hi, Lori. How are hey. you? I'm good. Um, I don't think I got the right supplies. Oh, no. Did I give you the wrong one? I think so. What are you or missing? You just put different stuff in there. So you should have had, um, let's see, you had all of that. You should have had in there um, scrap of paper, leftover wine corks um two magnets plant clippings moss pot dirt um yeah uh, uh what else did you oh markers i put in even though you said you had them because there's a special kind of marker in there what else did you have that you shouldn't have had oh i put tape in there because i put tape in everybody's okay i didn't get any paint i didn't get any watercolors oh right Right, right. So if you look at the right, see where it says status have? Yeah. Right? So yeah. what I put on there is you should have everything marked as have in the right-hand column. The other stuff you don't have yet. Oh, you haven't brought around the paint. Correct. Okay. Were, part, <laughs> that's okay. Part of what I was doing there was just doing a survey to see what people had so I can plan right. projects. Um, we may or may not do everything that's on here, um, but it was a way to kind of keep track. And this way, I know what you actually have now. So there okay. you go. Okay. 
That makes sense then. Okay. All right. I'm just going to go get my roster off the printer and then I think we are going to, oh, there's Wendy. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the only, we're only missing one person who, um, let me just see if I got a message from her so that we don't wait. Because that happens sometimes. The thing about full Zoom is that you can't navigate around anything else. Okay, let's see. I did not get any messages. <sighs> All right, so just to reiterate, you yes. basically are in your kitchen and you have a soft pan at the ready. I will be right back. I'm just going to go. I, somebody might have two things on or just a loudspeaker. I'm not sure which because I'm hearing the feedback of myself. All right, did you say I'm in my kitchen? Uh, kitchen is ideal. Okay, I'm going to have to move. Oh, you know what? I forgot to. Well, oh, you're probably close enough to your kitchen. You can run back and forth. Yeah. We're, all okay. we're going to be doing is boiling corks for 10 minutes. Okay. So, uh, and in fact, we will probably. I have, to get, I have to get back to Zoom here. Let's see. Can we put the water on to boil now? Um, yes. So what I was going to say is fill your saucepan about uh, halfway up, just enough that you can boil it um, for about 10 minutes and you're not going to run out. I'm going to put this microphone on just because the sound is a little better. Okay. I guess I better get mine on too, or you're going to be ahead of me. Sorry, I bet that's really loud now that I put the microphone on. Sorry. All right, so... We are gonna, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Can I take down the the supply list right now? It's okay with me. Going once, going twice, and gone. All right. Well, hi everybody. It's really good to see you. Um, we are almost complete. We have um, Abby Lovell is also in our class, so hopefully she'll be here um, either later or in future classes. Um, I don't know if everybody knows everybody else. Um, we already had one intro. Yeah, sort of. Me too, Ellen. Um, and thank goodness you guys put your names up there because I am terrible with names. Um, so I appreciate that more than you know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mark our attendance. So um, Pam, can you just give us like in two minutes, just introduce yourself and we'll just kind of go around. Oh. Pam Katz, I've been a member of Suburban for 45 years, and I enjoy- uh, I can't hear you, Pam. Oh, oh my You're mute is off. Muted, but I don't hear you at all. Oh, you know why? I know why, because I, I put this on. <sighs> all right, forget the mic. <laughs> Go ahead, start again. Okay, do you hear me? I hear you now. Okay. Clearly, Pam, you joined as an infant, right? If you've been- <laughs> You got it. Okay. I joined when the lady above you was an infant. <laughs> okay. Alyssa is my daughter. Oh, I didn't know. Oh. That. And um, we joined 45 years ago when she was a little girl. Wow. Okay. And, well, and you said you're, a, you're an art girl. You're a crafty girl. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy quilting most of all. Hmm. And uh, outdoor sports and throughout Corona, we've been walking every day, trying oh, to rock. stay out of the refrigerator. Uh, that's about it. I, I was a registered nurse for almost 50 years. Okay. And now I am enjoying retirement. Awesome. Great to meet you. And my grandkids. <laughs> All right, Alyssa. 
Uh, that's my mom. <laughs> and um, yeah, I've been at Suburban when I was a kid and now again as an adult. And um, I have two young kids who are online downstairs with Mrs. Wolf, who I also had as a teacher growing up. So it's fun to have them have her as a teacher as well. That's Along with, I know Susan was their teacher last semester. So that was wonderful as well. And yeah, I'm excited about this. I am not as artsy as my mom, but I get some of her art genes and I love doing projects with the kids now. And um, yeah, I like sports too and being outside and cooking. I took Deb's cooking class last semester and that was wonderful. Woo, and woo. excited to see what we are doing for art this time. I'll pay you for that one later. Thank you. Okay. And, Lori. and just a little plug, um, Lori there, Lori and I are working on the gatherings programming together. So that has been a lot of fun as well. So it's good to see you, Lori. <laughs> good to see you on a different Zoom meeting. And I've heard wonderful exactly. things about that, by the way. So, all right, Lori, okay. good segue. Um, yeah, we're on a roll here. It's going to be three out of three. Um, I've been a member. You're a daughter of um, Pam's also? Pardon? You're a daughter <laughs> of Pam's also? <laughs> Um, for, I want to say maybe all of my life, my parents have been members, <clears throat> went through, you know, went through it all through, a, through all the rabbis, had all the experience with all the different rabbis. Um, nice. Yeah. Uh, very, very nice. Seen the congregation evolve and um, who's kept me company and has been my support throughout COVID is Diesel and he's under a blanket sleeping on the couch. And I like to cook and I used to be crafty and Susan and I did a program on Jewish, um, Jewish traditions yeah. for non-Jewish non people in the activity field to teach them how they could work with non-Jewish folks and just instill some education on, on oh, Jewish super. culture. I love and it. I think that's it. Thank you, Lori. You're Susan, welcome. Good segue. So I'm Susan, and I have been at Suburban for 15 or so years. Um, when our daughter was looking around, or we were looking around for a place for a bat mitzvah, we chose Suburban for many different reasons, the art being one of them, the clientele people being another one. And my tie in to three of you at Suburban is Mrs. Wolf because she's an Akron girl. And her brother and my brother were both brothers. No, that's true, but they had um, their bar mitzvahs together. And now her brother is this big, big, big shot in the field of gerontology, of which I happen to have a piece of paper on that I got a degree in gerontology, old folks in aging. So it was fun to, to see her again and catch up as we always do when we see each other. I enjoy baking. I enjoy putzing around. I like kiddos. I work with senior adults. Awesome. Thank you. By the way, if your water is boiling, um, yeah. feel free to go ahead and throw in your corks and um, put your lid on and then turn it down a little bit. It doesn't need to be boiling furiously. Mine's going to be like on a sort of medium to medium low just to soften them up. I figured out the microphone thing, by the way. Hopefully you can hear this well. Figured somebody would have told me by now if you can't. All right. Ellen. Uh, hi. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> I have, let's see, connections. I have emailed with Pam about a hundred times with <laughs> to Cavalry, and then also most recently the postcard thing. So um, that's that's hello. And, and Alyssa, I know I've emailed with you for something, maybe that and some other things. And oh. I've, been, I've been a member about six years and Susan was the first person I really met because you I emailed mm -hmm. you to help me with well one of the first to help me with one of the early Kol Nashim things and I don't even remember what 
because it was a long time ago. I knew I liked you, Pam. I'm a retired nurse. <laughs> <laughs> um, FPB girl, Case Western alum. Um, and I'm more popularly known as Samantha's Nana Ellen because my yeah. grandma is Samantha Greenfield. My daughter is Jackie Greenfield, Yay. my son-in-law, who calls me Ma Too, and I call him Son Too, Matt. Oh, I love it. So yeah, it's all cool. Um, I was never a crafty person, and I lived in Indiana for many, many years where everybody was crafty, and I said <laughs> I was craft impaired. Um, but I craft impaired. But <laughs> craft challenged. Craft challenged. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, okay. That's better than handicapped, right? We're going down the line yes. of euphemisms. But um, I'm actually reasonably crafty and I sew a bit, just a bit. And as Susan said, I think putts around is a really good, and I do like to cook and bake. I'm actually going to make something with phyllo for dinner. So. Oh, yum. Yeah. What time should we come well, over? Um, I'll put it out on the porch, Bastia. <laughs> I'm going to try it anyway. Well, we know where that is. Yeah. Yum. yeah, you do. Well, I'll put it on the back porch. Yeah. Even my, my house faces um my house faces the acacia reservation in the back and people come yeah. we've done some some covid interactions outside oh nice yes with Lori and susan and diesel was there once even diesel, all right. yep. cool all right thank you ellen wendy I'm the newbie. Um, I don't really know anybody. I think I've been a member for two years now. Um, I've always been crafty. I putter a little bit in um, metal smithing when I can oh, grab cool. a few minutes. Yeah, it's fun. And let's see. Do you make um, jewelry or something yeah. else? Jewelry. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Um, I think... I must live nearby to Ellen if she backs up to the Acacia Reservation. <laughs> so, hello, neighbor. Yes. So um, five out of the seven of the class members are in Lyndhurst, and literally it was five minutes in between houses for you guys. Oh, how funny. Um, that's about it. Well, that's wonderful. Pam, I'm so glad you joined. I mean, Wendy, I'm so glad you joined <laughs> us. Um, see, I, that's why I need the name on there. I had to look down there and go, okay, that's why. I know, me too. Um, so that's, that's fabulous. And some of you I, I know uh, relatively well, and some of you I don't. So um, we're going to be a nice small class, uh, small, relatively speaking, um, only seven of us, um, which I think is a perfect number of people, eight all together, including me, um, so that we can definitely interact and get to know each other better, um, which is part of why we're doing this. I don't know about you guys, but uh, it's been hard being so uh, isolated. And one thing that I've found is that classes like this and, um, you know, events like this where you actually get to interact and especially when you're creating something together um, have been really something that um, has helped me quite a bit in dealing with the isolation that I feel. So um, hopefully uh, you guys feel the same way and uh, we'll all enjoy this together. And there's there's no, um, all, all I ask is that you be um, willing to try something new and, um, you know, maybe get your hands a little bit dirty sometimes because we're going to have some fun. Um, by the way, um, I'm Deb Rogers. I don't think I introduced <laughs> myself. Um, in addition to being a teacher, I'm also the music director here at Suburban. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm an arty kind of a girl. Most of the work that I do with art is in sugar. I'm a cake decorator. Um, I own my own business. Um, but I also love to do mosaics. You might be able to see it behind me. Let me see if I can get this over there a little bit. See the mosaic under the microwave there? That's one of mine. Um, so I put those together. We did We redid our kitchen some years ago and I did 23 lineal feet of <laughs> accent line. That's six inches wide. It was uh, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? A challenge yeah labor of love labor of love <laughs> um yeah. yeah that's what i was looking for so uh, it took a lot of time but it was so worth it i love it it has um one thing i love about mosaics is that um they don't have to just tiles right so uh, woven into my mosaics are shells that i picked up on maui where my parents live in the winter um, some costume jewelry that uh, had belonged to my mother-in-law uh, there's this beautiful um 
uh, square linked as it would happen, a bracelet that I put in there. And um, also we broke up a, we, we sacrificed a wine glass that my father-in-law used to uh, use. And so it's, you know, there's a lot of stuff close to my heart in there. And um, mm -hmm. for me, that's one thing about art is that um, it's, it, it should be something that brings you joy to do it and to look at it afterwards. So there you have it. So thank you. Um, our corks need to boil for um, 10 minutes at least. I don't think you can overdo it. The reason we are boiling the corks is to make them easier to cut um, because that's what we're gonna do today. So just as an introduction, we are going to take this class um, and use it as, a, using art as a lens to explore um, tikkun olam. So um, somebody uh, please tell me, um, somebody who is not how about this somebody who is not a teacher at suburban because you might have a leg up on knowing this um explain to me what what tikkun olam means and and you guys can unmute you don't you don't have to stay muted we can just talk go ahead pam repairing the world through good deeds yeah through good deeds what what uh give me another example what of tikkun olam uh the the Calvary Church program that Suburban does. Absolutely. Feeding people is definitely tikkun olam. What else? Well, we just did that drive um, to make people aware of the election. And yes. That's a way to repair the world. Absolutely. So uh, social action is a way to repair the world. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, this is not Suburban, but I have a friend who runs some a program called TLC which is through the National Council of Jewish Women, and they give blankets and clothing to the ERs, the hospital, to give to victims of abuse, whose clothing is often taken away. Um, yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. I love it. It's a really cool program. I just found out about it. So, By the way, mm -hmm. teachers can talk now. I just meant for a... Uh, an introduction to what Tikkun Olam was, Susan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Food and what about, book donations. What's that? Food and book donations. Yes, absolutely. What about something that doesn't involve giving something material to somebody else? We already had one example that Lori gave of social action. Give me another example of something that doesn't involve uh, a material item that can be considered visiting to the sick. Visiting the sick. Yep, Ellen. I was I was going to say something. You're going to say. Uh, okay. I'll speak for Susan. Um, she calls seniors oh. um, during the COVID. Nice. I love it. So um, sometimes I think just being kind to other people is um, a very simple, basic level of tikkun olam. So there are so many different things we can do. And we're going to explore um, quite a few of these things as we go through this six weeks. So there's my intro. Now we're going to move on. So um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. All right, so we did our little welcome. Um, I took attendance. Um, so if anybody has tzedakah that they would like to donate, that's great. Um, just set it aside, please. Um, if, um, you know, if you want me to keep track, you can always text me how much you want or whatever and then you can write a check at the end however you want to do it you can keep it and then write a check later or you can you know whatever you want to do um, you don't have to donate this is just a nice thing to do so uh, it's also a mitzvah which is how many of you guys when you were little did your parents or somebody teach you that a mitzvah was a quote-unquote good deed and how many so raise your hand if somebody told you it was a good deed mm -hmm. okay so that's maybe some kind of how come i'm only seeing six of you there we go okay now raise put your hands down now raise your hand if anybody told you that a mitzvah when you were a kid was a commandment i don't remember i i had a similar experience i don't remember ever being told that it was a commandment it was one of the things in the torah that we were instructed to do they they told us it was a good deed and i think the two are kind of the same but not and so I, I um, like helping people understand that it is a good deed to fulfill a commandment because um, it's both things. It was just a little side thing. Okay. 
So today we are going to talk about Baal Tashkit. Now, Alyssa, who was in my class uh, last time, knows a little bit about this because we talked about it for sure. And I'm a, a big fan of this, uh, talking about this concept of um, Baal Tashkit. So from, uh, I'll hide this so I can see my slide. Um, from Deuteronomy, there is a phrase that says, don't destroy your enemy's fruit trees when you besiege them. What does that mean? Why am I bringing it up in a tikkun olam class? Anybody have any ideas? You, it, there's, there's no right or wrong answer. I'll tell you what the rabbinic interpretation is in a second. Don't take down the fruit along with your enemy. Yeah, the fruit. Keep the fruit for others. Okay, so keep the fruit. Preserve the fruit, so to speak. Don't, don't knock down the trees just because they're your enemy's trees. Anybody have anything to add to that? So well, you're not taking care. Oh, go ahead. You're not treating them unkindly. Um, oh. You're not starving them. You're allowing them to have the food that they're growing. Right. Okay. Good. Alyssa, what were you going to say? I was going to say taking care of the earth. Taking you care know, of the earth. We're not, not destroying the earth. Absolutely. The so these are these are all great answers. Um, and uh, it's really interesting because the um, the rabbinic interpretation uh, really got quite broad, where they're basically saying we were given this earth to, to work it and to take care of it. And, um, you know, if you if this was, you know, they said, if you have surrounded a, uh, a city, then um, you are not to take down those fruit trees because those are you know, that's part of God's creation and there's no reason to take them down and you cannot, you shall not destroy living things like that. Okay. So, um, a lot of, uh, nowadays we talk about in terms of recycling is a modern interpretation of this. Uh, so you want to recycle stuff. Um, think about some of the destructive, um, techniques that are used in agriculture, in logging, um, all those kinds of things makes you kind of think about, um, are we really doing what we can to take care of the world? And um, so at its, uh, at its most basic level for the purposes of this class, I wanted to use some um, materials that would normally get thrown out or would sit in a bin. How many of you have a bin of corks somewhere in your house? <laughs> yeah, me too. And I know some of you said you did have corks, but I provided some of my own. One reason I did is, I don't know if you noticed this, but one of them is from a wine brand called 19 Crimes. And um, those can be kind of fun. They are, uh, it's an Australian brand um, that we were really into for a while of red wines. And they would print uh, different, um, the premise is that in Australia, there were 19 crimes um, in England that could get you banished to the prison island of Australia. There were 19 of them and the corks list them. And so um, I think we all got different ones. So we'll have to see and share what we got once we are working on our corks. So um, we are going to use corks, which are, um, uh, you know, discards, things that we either wouldn't use or, uh, you know, wouldn't use for this necessarily. And uh, we are also going to combine this with the holiday that's coming up. Um, does anybody know what the holiday is that we are about to hit this coming week? Tu Bishvat. Tu Bishvat. Very good. Were you there this morning, Wendy? Or no. you just knew? Oh, good for you. We did talk <laughs> about it in, uh, in Tefila this morning, and we sang the whoosh song, the Debbie Friedman whoosh song. Um, but uh, we... Um, it's Tu Bishvat, which is the, uh, also known as the birthday of the trees um, or Jewish Arbor Day, um, because in Israel, this is when they start thinking about planting trees. And so it is traditional on Tu Bishvat. Oh, sorry, Tu Bishvat is the 15th. Um, the, the Tet Yud is the Hebrew way of spelling the number 15. Um, Yud is 10 and a Tet is 5, so Tu Bishvat is the 15th of Shvat, the Jewish month of uh, Shvat. Shvat. Um, and uh, it is uh, traditional to plant trees. And so what you have in your bag today, uh, oh shoot, and I forgot to bring my plants in. 
um, you have a little bag with clippings from my plants. I'm going to introduce you to my plants. I'm going to go get them because I need them to make mine. So I will be right back. Um, you can probably turn off your water, but go ahead and leave leave the saucepan, leave the corks in the saucepan for a second while I talk through what we're going to do. Be right back. Does it, uh, did anybody notice that your cork swelled up a little bit? That's a good thing. That's what we want. All right. Let's see if I can find my cursor. There we go. So um, those of you who know me, um, oh, here's Abby. Yay. Um, those of you who know me on Facebook might have seen my posts about the, um, the farmer's market in Shaker. I love to go to the farmer's market when it's open. Hi, Abby. Welcome. I'm sorry, Deb. I forgot. No worries, my friend. We are actually um, just, it, you missed the, the discussion part for now, but you can always watch it back. We're just getting ready to do the art part. So um, Perfect. what you can do if you are, uh, if you, um, let me start again. Hi. So you can, um, if, if you are near your kitchen, um, hopefully you can get a little saucepan with, that's about half full of water and just throw your corks in there for 10 minutes and boil them, okay? Okay. All right. Got it. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm going to, uh, I'll just continue talking about uh, where we're going with this. So um, those of you who, uh, n go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you can do that first and then. Um, so uh yeah so at the farmer's market there was somebody selling these little teeny weeny in little teeny pots little succulents for like a dollar a piece and i thought they were so cute and i they were just adorable and one of them had two little pieces in it and i said that one's a dollar too she said yes i want that one right so because i'm greedy i guess i don't know i it was just so adorable it had a little baby guy next to it and then there was so i picked two different kinds and i've had them since the beginning of the summer and so they have kind of taken off i have transplanted them here they are um they're um for those of you who know succulents they're just two different varieties of hens and chicks and what they do normally is they will throw off these uh little babies and um this one does it slightly differently um so you have two different kinds of little babies in your um in your plants so you should have four plants total you might even have some other little schmutz in there i don't know but anyway these are the mama plants and i wanted to introduce you to them um eventually what i understand is that these bigger pieces like this one will eventually flower and die and these but all of these little guys can make other plants so now you've you've met my succulents. I love these. They're so pretty. And you know what? They stayed out in the bad weather um, for a long time before I pulled them inside. Um, and they just kind of they they kind of went and they kind of pulled up in themselves. And then when I brought them inside into my sunroom where they get warmth a few hours a day anyway, and they reopened, they went ah. And um, this one especially just started throwing off these babies. So. Anyway, so today we are going to make a little craft project with our corks. So these are corks with little babies from my um, from my plants. Um, and I what I did is I put magnets on the back of them so that I could put them on something magnetic. Um, you don't have to do that, but they tend to be top heavy. So if you don't put magnets on them, you'll want to take maybe three and kind of put them together like one higher than the other somehow and just kind of attach them so that they'll hold each other up. Um, but uh, this is a really fun way to um, have, it's almost like an air plant. 
it requires a drop of water every couple of weeks and it will stay alive for a while. I planted these two weeks ago and they still look great. Um, so that's the first thing. That's um, what you can do with a couple of them that we're gonna walk through together. And then the other thing we're going to do with them, um, what one way to spread, um, to improve the world again is kindness and being nice to other people. Um, and sharing things that we have. And so what I would love for you to do with the other one is plant it in that little pot as my gift to you um, of sharing the life of this plant and the story of this plant. And as it grows, it will grow into something big like those. And when it does and it throws off little babies, I would ask you to consider um, planting them in little pots and giving them to other people and um, continue the chain and continue spreading. So I have a few of the babies from these plants are already in my friends' houses. And I love the idea of this, um, this one plant kind of spreading joy to everybody. I know I'm a little hokey, you guys, but I'm into this stuff. So anyway, so um, I'm gonna put these guys back up here. I, I just think those are the cutest little things. I just love them. Um, so now let's get to the artwork. Um, I don't know the best way to do this. We're going to, I have an overhead camera that I'm going to show you, but some of this is just kind of do it, but um, the overhead camera is a little bit higher quality. So I'm going to try to see uh, if I can share this one with you so I can show you what we're going to do with the corks. Um, dub, dub, dub. There we go. All right. Are you able to see my countertop now? Hopefully. Yes. yes. Okay, good. I'm going to pull that over a little bit so I can see what you're seeing. All right. So what I want to show you is what I did to this cork. All right. So this is my 19 crimes cork. Um, the, it is number 18 is the crime. It says incorrigible rogues who broke out of prison and persons reprieved from capital punishment. So that's one group of people that got sent to Australia. Um, in any case, uh, what we're going to do with these, we're going to use our sharp X-Acto knife and we are going to hollow them out. It's difficult to do when it's, um, when it's hard, but it's much, much easier to do. It should go through like butter for the one that you boiled for 10 minutes. Okay, so Abby, leave yours in a little bit longer um, to make sure it gets soft enough. Um, just a little thing, if we were in class together, I would give you a moment of X-Acto blade safety. So I'm going to do that um, right now, um, just to make sure. The safest X-Acto knife blade, X-Acto knives are very sharp, obviously. They're kind of like scalpels. Um, but what I wanna tell you is that the sharper the knife is, tell me this, is it safer or more dangerous if it's sharp? Safer. safer, safer, safer. Thank you very much. So you always want to make sure you're using a sharp knife. Um, for those of you who did not have knives and blades, I supplied you with two extra blades. Um, uh, and I think the one in there, I tested them all and they should be sharp enough to start with. Um, I got those from Temple. Uh, so hopefully they'll be okay. All right. So you're going to take your cork and don't burn yourself, please. But, you know, I just tend to reach into the pot <laughs> and you, you're going to just um, just hollow it out. And um, does anybody want to read us their crime, by the way? Sure. Mine oh, is God. stealing roots, trees or plants or destroying them. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know that was there. You got the ball trash heat one. I guess I did. I All right. So. Who else has a crime on their cork to share? counterfeiting the copper coin that's, uh -huh. that's, that's not so much fun <laughs> you know you not, word, Sue? what's that i can't make up the first word but it's something naval stores in certain cases naval hmm. these but are almost like fortune cookies what do you think that word is that right there i don't remember i used to know them all but who else anybody else have one they want to share mm -hmm. Naval stores. What does it say? It's M something. Maybe embezzling? I don't know. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. That's the name of the uh, wine. Right. 
Well, it's called um, embezzle something. Embezzling. Is that embezzling? Okay. Well, this be. is supposed to go through like butter boy. Stealing <laughs> not or it is. Not. not, Ellen. I'm so sad. Right. Be careful. So I'll show you how I'm doing this to kind of control it because these things, you know, it's, it's hard to saw with. It's easier to just press with. So I'm leaving a little rim. You can see my blade is like a, a millimeter or two in from the edge, right? And I'm going in at an angle like that. So I want to make like a core out of it. So I'm steadying it with this finger on the knife hand so I don't push too far and I'm holding it with the other hand, okay? And then I just turn it as I go. Remember you turn the cork, not your, uh, oh, I see. not okay. the knife, That's okay? Helpful. Thank you. Is that working? Better, yeah. Thank okay, you. good. It doesn't have to be super deep. It just has to be deep enough to give us something to glue that into. Oh yeah, so um, really uh, in a moment, in the next thing you'll, you'll do after this, if you haven't already, you can heat up your gun. Wow, that came out quick on mine. Um, so there's, there's my little core. It's not very deep on this one. Um, I am going to maybe go down and make it a little deeper. Um, one way you can do that is you can go straighter down on the sides and then you can kind of chip it out with the knife. Okay. So just do as much or as little as you want with that. Um, Abby, I know you will be able to catch up when you're corks have swollen a little bit. You can look at them and you can tell they will be easier to cut when they're swollen. Isn't it amazing the things you learn when you're trying to figure out a Tikkun Olam project? Who knew? This was all new to me, this whole uh, heat up a cork so you can work with it. I've tried to cut corks before and they are very, can be very difficult. <laughs> I'm craft impaired on this one. Craft impaired. Just do your best and try not to bend the blade against the outside so that it doesn't break. And if it does, well, you just discovered where the back is. That's what we always say in the cake decorating world too. People say, oh my gosh, I'm afraid to make a mistake. And I say, well, without mistakes, how do you know where to put the flowers? Now, amazingly, you will find that when you, when we do glue these plants and stuff in, the glue doesn't affect the plant. The plant doesn't mind. These plants are incredibly hardy. Deb, how deep did you say we should try and go? You know, um, in my other ones here, I didn't get all the way as deep as my pinky. I don't know if you can kind of see that. But maybe about, it's really only about a half an inch, maybe. It's not that far. You just need something to grab onto, you know? Um, I'm the kind of perfectionist who will just sit here and worry at this for hours if nobody stops me. So um, really, you just need a divot in your cork so that you can then work with it. We're not going to actually use these um oh actually i do have an idea for the little bits that you cut out of the cork just set them aside i have an idea of where we'll put them so that we don't have to throw them out Let's put them in the flower pot that's exactly what we're going to do with them good call susan you've done this before maybe no nope. no she's just crafty crafty girl nope. no, definitely, she's she's definitely she's no one on all right, I'm gonna go get my glue gun and plug it in because I forgot to pull that out today. Oh, I love this. Holes in both corks, correct? What's that? Holes in both corks? Yes, assuming you want to right. uh, make two of them, yes. Um, one thing to think about, um, no, forget it. That's not important yet. But once you decide where the front and the back is, that's gonna help you decide where to put the magnet, but that's at the end. So these are also, um, even if you don't, uh, if you don't have a magnetic thing to put them on, um, you can always, like I said, you can sort of connect them together. Um, one idea that we had had uh, earlier, because Rabbi Shana was asking me the same question, 
don't know if you can see this, but if you kind of connect them at different heights, they look almost like pilings, right? And then you can, you can put it uh, as a display. Uh, she was saying she would put it like inside a teapot, a teacup, um, just an empty teacup, just as something kind of cute coming out of it. So you can do that. Um, or if you just put a few together, they make a nice little knickknack on your, uh, on your counter, or you can give it as a gift to somebody who might have a <laughs> magnetic something to put it on or a bulletin board or whatever. Now, I have also found that after the cork hardens up again, if you want to make the wall a little thinner at the top, you can do that. But when it's still soft like this, uh, it's kind of hard to work that thin wall without breaking it. So just be careful. I got to decide who I'm going to give mine to now that I have, I will have four by the time I'm done. So the corks that I gave you are, are um, some of you might've gotten ones from the Finger Lakes. I love to go to the Finger Lakes and drink wine. Has anybody else ever been there for their wine country stuff? Yeah, Pam, you do? Mm -hmm. do you Ice have wine comes out today. Ice wine comes out today from where? Niagara or New York or Ferrante uh -huh. or? Oh, I can't remember. I, I heard it on this morning's news. It's ice wine. Oh. Ah. Love ice wine. Me too. We um, took a Could it be the one in, um, starts with a D? Debonet, uh, De Debonet Vineyards? Yes. Maybe that. Yes. yes. There are some local ones. Um, I'm not a huge fan of local wine, but but they do do a wonderful local ice wine. Ferrante does one too. Ferrante, yeah. Yeah. But we, uh, Ken and I went up um, to Niagara on the Lake once, who's well known for their ice wine too. And um, it was so much fun. Um, for anybody who may, may not know what ice wine is, it's, it's wine made from grapes that have been left on the vine till they're almost rotten. They're left on until after the first, uh, the first freeze, and then they have to pick them right then. So it's, it's very limited production lots. So they're a little more expensive. They're probably about, you know, cost the same amount for a 375 as you typically pay for a 750 or more. Um, but uh, they are uh, very, 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 very sweet. And uh, yeah. The ideal oh, temperature good. is 12 degrees. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Hey, can, right? can you plug this in for me? Thank you. Just pick a plug, any plug. Appreciate it. Yeah, so is everybody doing okay with their corks? Anybody done yet? Uh, no. No? Yes, maybe. Almost. Yes, almost. Take your time, please. This is a sharp knife. Last thing I want is blood on your countertops. You. Um, another fun thing you can do with leftover corks. Well, let me ask you guys before I throw all of mine at you. Who else has an idea of what you can do with leftover corks other than let them pile up like many of us tend to do? Cork boards. Cork board, yep. Coasters. Hot pads. Coasters, hot pads. Um, oh put it between your washer and dryer so they balance and don't make noise. <laughs> oh, good idea. You know, that I made me think. I came up with that. <laughs> I love it. That, that actually makes me think of another one, which is you can slice off pieces of it and use it to level something, you know, where you put it under the foot like to level it. it. You just slice off the end, right? Yeah. So um, we we tend to keep them. We have a cute little basket that's shaped like a, I guess, like a carafe, and it's full of, uh, full of corks. And then it got full. So, of course, now I have a huge bin that I just offload them into every once in a while. And I keep saying, oh, I'm going to make a... Mm, and then I haven't done it yet. So I do have a cork board though, that's made of, of cork, of corks end on, I think end on. Um, another one that I saw that was really pretty is where somebody put them in the shape of a heart. And what they did was they took the ones, they used the color of the wine on the end of it 
to arrange them so that the reddest ones were together and it sort of made an ombre effect in the heart. And that was really pretty too. Really You're, for those of you who have not yet used a glue gun, um, you, you can uh, plug it in and put it, um, either one is fine for this low should be adequate. Um, I got dual temperature guns because the low heat is perfect for things like styrofoam that tend to melt with higher heat. Um, high heat has the advantage that once you start, um, once you start and you dispense the glue from the glue gun, um, it stays liquid longer so that you can adjust things if you need to. Uh, when it's on low, it will harden almost instantly when it comes out. So you really have to know where you're going with it if it's on low. Do we do that are, now? Uh, it should be on now. Yeah, you definitely want it on and heating up. And while that's heating up, we are going to, oh, that's funny. My watch just told me it's time to stand. I've been standing for two hours, um, probably in the same place. Okay, uh, you're gonna want some of your moss. This is Spanish moss. Um, you're just gonna use a little bit of it um, to kind of help put it around uh, the plant, not around, but sort of with the plant. Um, as you put it in and that will help anchor it. The other thing the Spanish moss does is, I'm guessing, uh, is that it kind of holds that drop or two of water that you put in and keeps it near the plant to keep the plant happy. Um, that's my guess and I'm sticking to it. For some reason, mine are still alive. So that's pretty cool. We are not using the dirt for this part, so. And then you will also need your clippings, which means I have to, clip mine. So if you have, um, you should have the lighter green clippings actually should have roots on them. Um, the uh, at least one should have an okay root on it. That is a great one. Uh, the, the bigger the root, that's the one I would save to use with the dirt. These guys will will be fine. Um, this darker one will root no matter what, I think, but I haven't experimented with the babies from, with the babies from this plant yet. So um, we'll see how that works. All right, so I'm gonna take one of these babies off. I'm gonna cut it all the way up here because I don't want the plant wasting energy feeding this stem, even though we're gonna cut it off. Now, this is a little bit tall um, with my cork. I'm kind of, it's going to kind of be a little much for me. So I'm going to strip a few of the lower leaves off on mine. Just a little bit so it's not too, too much. All right. And then, um, sorry, I should have asked you to have a pair of scissors handy. Um, when I cut this stem shorter, which you will all need to do, I'm going to cut it like this. So can you see that I'm, I'm cutting it at a slanted angle like this? And um, I'm doing that because I want to make sure that the plant is up against the moss where the water is and whatever. So I cut it just at a little bit of an angle like that. And then I'm going to kind of put it with the moss to make like a little bundle like that. Deb, can I see how, how short you cut your stem again? So my stem is about an inch, but it kind of depends on how deep your hole is, right? So you yeah. can test it in your hole. Um, just cut it short enough that it's where you want it to end up in the hole more than anything else. And then the way I'm gonna put it in, here's my glue gun. Um, is there anybody here who has never used a glue gun? Me. Okay, Ellen, okay, and Wendy, good, okay. So you wanna put, see how there's a stick of glue in here? You wanna take one of your sticks mm -hmm. and stick it into the end. Do I have your... to keep the glue gun plugged in as I do this? You do. Okay, then I have to move everything. 
Oh no. Plug right on my counter. That was one thing I didn't do in my kitchen. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Ellen. No, no, no. Are we using it on high or low? I don't remember what you said. Uh, you can use it on either. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you use it on high, you have a little more time to adjust the position of things. If you use it on low, it will harden faster, um, which can also be an advantage. So for this project, either one is fine. Um, I use hot glue a lot uh, with styrofoam, and then you always want to use it on low with styrofoam so you don't melt it. All right, so I'm going to show you on the first one, and I'm going to do a second one. So if anybody who's, I know, Ellen, you're still working on your... No, that's okay. My quirk's okay. Good. I'm just All right. somewhere else with my plug. Go ahead. All right. So I've got my little bundles already here, just the way I kind of want it. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm on low here. Um, I am going to put... So when you squeeze this, for those of you who have not used hot glue, um, you want to be over a surface that is heat resistant because it can drip um, when you're done. So all I did is I put a drop or a, a pretty healthy drop of hot glue into the very bottom of my cork, stuck my little bundle in, and then that's how it looks. So I got the bundle, I put it to one side because that's the way I like it. Oh, Pam, look at yours. You've already got your, your uh, magnet on too, huh? Yeah. Look at you. Sorry, I thought that's what you wanted us to do. Oh, no, and that's totally fine. The only thing I was gonna mention about the placement of the magnet is if your cork looks interesting and you want something interesting to be on the front, just make sure that you put the magnet on the back. That's the only thing. I love it. Pam, isn't that the cutest thing? It is. I'm, I'm just such a dork about this kind of stuff. And I just and realized I didn't Deb, get Deb, you want us to use, you want us to use this one, not, does it matter which one we use for the it, cork? It not does not. You can, you can use either one of them, but the bigger the roots, like the ones that have a little bit of dirt on them, I think will plant better. So I would might save one of ones with roots to put in your little pot. Okay, gotcha. Okay, okay. thanks. Sure. So we're, gotta... we're supposed to put a little of the moss with the uh, plants and glue it in there. Yeah. Okay. I'm still. No, that's in the okay. Out phase. Take your time. I think on mine, I kind of like this, uh, this design. So this is going to be the front of mine because I like the, uh, the kind of swirly whirlies going on here. And so I'm going to use the hot glue again. All I'm going to do, whoops, let me get back up here again. All right. So to put the magnet on, so uh, yeah, I guess I should say again, for those of you who have not used hot glue, um, when you push the trigger on the glue, it advances the glue stick. If your gun is not hot enough yet, no glue will come out yet. It'll just be waiting to be hot enough. It needs to be hot enough to melt the glue. Once you push the trigger once, it'll push the, the glue stick into the back and it should stay there right where it left it. Um, so if you need like a ton of glue, like a big old line of glue, uh, which we're not doing, you would need to squeeze it several times to get that. Okay. So, but for what we're doing, one squeeze is probably enough once it's queued up in there, one or two squeezes. All right. I'm going to put the magnet on the back of mine. About that much. Glue. A question. Yes, ma'am. I have one like this and a little teeny one left. So wait, show, uh, let me, let me pin you for a second so I can see you better. Well, that didn't help. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that only works. Is, is this little tiny one, the one that, that goes in the pot or should I sit, put this one in the pot? Ah, um, you have, you should have four. Do you have four pieces total? 
No, I have three and I, there are a couple of pieces that broke off of the small one, I think. Ah, okay. All right. So um, what I would say um, is the one with the biggest, yeah, that one that has the biggest uh, roots on it is probably mm -hmm. best for the pot. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. Okay. And then the other one that doesn't have any roots on it, I would try it in a cork. Worst comes to worst. Yeah. No, it's got some. It's got a yeah. little bit. Okay. I had two with roots and two without. Yes, that's how it should be. Um, the two with roots should be the lighter colored ones from this plant. Uh-huh. Right? And then the other ones were the, the big, long, scaly looking dinosaur looking sort of <laughs> ones from this plant. So that's the one I'm saving for the pot. Uh, I would save not, the, well, okay. <laughs> there are two corks and four plants. Right. Should be four plants. So um, saving for the pot would be one of the ones from this plant that has roots on it. Mm -hmm. I would definitely save for the pot. And then um, you might want to save one of these too so that you get the other variety. Okay, one of And each. then the other two can go in the corks. Or but you can do it however you want. I'm not going to grade you. So. <laughs> so let's see. Wait, Ellen, I'm going to spotlight you. Hold them up. I'm going to. Yeah. So we can all see you. Well. Oh, yay. Aren't they cute? They are cute. They are cute. <laughs> and you can stick them together. If you stick them back to back, then they will stand up on your countertop if you don't have anything magnetic to put them on. There we go. Perfect. Yay. Very nice. All right. Who else is? Oh, Alyssa, I see yours. Hang on. Let's spotlight you so we can see them. <laughs> Oh, yay. Those are so cute. I'm such a baby. Mine's a little All right. crooked. Nice. Mm -hmm. Pam, were you holding yours up too? <sighs> oh, cool. Yeah, nice. I love it. I love it. So it's just a way to bring a little bit of extra beauty into the world um, with trash, cast offs. So let's see, were you holding something up there, um, Wendy, a second ago? I was. Whoops. This one came out really well. It's cute. Yeah. I like it. I like it, like it. Susan, you doing okay over there? All right, let's see. <laughs> ah. I love I love all the smiles that keep coming up with these. That's making me happy. Yeah. Abby, have you caught up? Are you there? Yeah, look at her. That one one done. Oh yay! But I, Wait, hold it closer to. What were not, you going to say about it? it the oh, the oh, long no. not glued in. It's not glued in. Yeah, it's like not sticking. I think I feel like. So you could always pick it back out again. If it comes right out again, pick it back out again, put another little dot of glue in there and you have to put it right in before it, um, before it hardens. Okay. Jam it in now. <laughs> they don't want to hurt him. <laughs> I know these little guys. All right. And then the last thing you're going to do with this is just put a little drop of water in with it to give him his first little drink. And um, hopefully that will uh, make no. him happy again. All right. So what I do is I just kind of take a little uh, drip of water from my faucet, or you can use a dropper if you want. And I kind of just touch it to the, uh, where, the, where the moss and the plant are. And that's it. So that guy's done. So, um, yay, now I have like a little crop of them up on my thing, I love it. All right, so um, the next thing, uh, so that that's for what you are making during this class, that is the last thing, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. Um, what The format of this class, because we have a longer class, I, I uh, 
I lobbied for a longer length class so that we could do more involved art projects if we wanted to, because um, I figured an, um, you know, 50 minutes really wasn't long enough to explain, have meaningful discussion and still make something. So um, full support, which was great. Um, but what, um, when we are in between classes, just like the other classes, we do have enrichment. And what I would love for you to do um, is with, with this extra little pot um, to do the planting. But the reason you're not necessarily doing it now um, is because what you may want to do, I'm actually gonna turn off my, if you have, if you are done, uh, please unplug your glue so it stops dripping. And for those of you who have never used it before, note that it stays hot for another 10 or 15 minutes. So please treat it, uh, treat it like you would a hot pot that just came off the stove. Okay. So um, you also have in your kits, a lot of you had scrap of paper, but some of you did not. Um, so I did include it. And then at the last second, I crammed in um, a piece of paper that had a shape on it that was drawn like this. And what you can do with that shape um, is you can cut it out and use it as a template because this will fit perfectly on the outside of your pot. So I'm not suggesting that you do this with the plain white paper, but that you use the white paper as a template and choose a piece of scrap of paper that you like the pattern on and we can put it on there. So now here's the one supply I didn't give you that you need for this. You either need something called Mod Podge or if you have white glue, you can take white glue and you can water it down 50-50 with water. And that will give you just the same thing. If you don't have either one of those, you can let me know and I can get you a little thing of it and drop it at your house or you can pick one up on Amazon or at Michael's or any place like that. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with this. If you want to uh, work along, you can, um, but what we're gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Mod Podge this to it. And then what I did is, now this is just artistic choices, but it's fun to talk about art, so let's talk about it. The piece of paper, I'm gonna spotlight myself so you can really see the pattern on this. Okay. The piece of paper that I'm using had uh, quite a bit of differences in patterns across it. And so from an artistic perspective, um, I wanted the part that went around the rim to look different than the part that went around the bottom. So this part right here um, was much busier. Okay, so this came from this part right here, which I really, really liked. And then down here, there was a part that was very similar to this so that it's just more plain, but it totally matches. Um, <laughs> I decided after delivering your stuff that I wanted this piece too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you a piece of paper that actually, uh, you can print if you want, that's got this shape on it. Um, because you're going around a cylinder, they're not gonna be perfectly straight stripes, obviously, okay? Um, the way you use um, Mod Podge, this is this technique is called decoupage, where you glue it on first, um, and then you put um, a layer or two or three, depending on how you want it to look. Um, you you put a uh, a layer or two or three of Mod Podge over it also, and that just kind of um, will glue it on like that. But I think, you know, actually, I'm not even going to make you stay and watch me unless you want to. Um, but I just think this is going to be so pretty once I get it on there. Okay. Now, when you're done, if it's still sticky afterwards, sometimes Mod Podge can, can be sticky when you're done. Um, you can always spray it with a shellac or uh, any kind of clear coat, anything like that um, will also work. So um, if anybody, if you, if you already know how to use Mod Podge and you're confident in, um, you know, planting and stuff, that's great. If you have to go, it's okay, I get it. Um, if you wanna stay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, pieces of cork, which I kind of shredded up really small. I'm gonna use a little more of my moss 
and I'm gonna, um, this I'll do after the Mod Podge, so I just wanna show you this real quick. I'm sorry, I'm a little disorganized today. Um, when I go to plant it, I'm gonna stick some of the moss in the bottom. I am going to stick my leftover cork in the bottom. Um, this is also a great use for leftover, remember packing peanuts that we used to get all the time? You don't see them very often anymore, but you can do that in the bottom of a pot too. Um, because uh, succulents really don't need a whole lot of depth of soil and you also want something that's going to drain very well for a succulent because um, they don't want to sit in water they don't want their feet wet so once you fill it like halfway with leftover stuff like this then you're going to put the dirt in it um, put the roots in and tamp it down a little bit with your fork or with your fingers okay i'm gonna not do that yet because I want to do the Mod Podge first. It's easier than dealing with it with dirt and a plant in it. So get out of there. All right. So you want to shake it. Mod Podge comes in glossy and matte. So you decide if you want it to be, oh boy, you decide if you want it to be shiny or not. It's totally up to you. Um, you can pour it out into another cup or you can just carefully dip. You can use, um, what do you call it? You can use a sponge for this. You can use a brush like I'm using. You can use a paper towel. And uh, the other very popular thing with children is fingers. So you don't need any special equipment to Mod Podge. Those of you who are Mod Podge experts, what else have you used? Any other tips for Mod Podging? Something I have never done. <laughs> oh, all right. So it's really all it really is, I think, is watered down white glue. There's nothing fancy mm -hmm. about it. It is, um, it's non toxic. Um, it's best, the best wash up is done when it's uh, wet. Don't let it dry because just like any glue, it's going to be tougher to wash up. Uh, when you put it on, you do have some adjustment time before your paper softens. So try to make sure it's nice and smooth or it doesn't have to be smooth put wrinkles in it'll have character that's totally cool too that's what i love about projects like this they're so forgiving so mine has a couple wrinkles and i'm totally cool with that it doesn't even show with the pattern i just don't want it to go under the bottom of the pot i don't want it to go beyond the end of the pot at all and then once you do that and you can just put a layer on top and then what i'll do is i will let this layer dry and then I'll put a couple more layers on. Okay, quick and easy. And it's going to look so cute when we're done. Does anybody have any questions so far? Now that we're, you know, done almost. All right. So um, the next session that we're going to do. I believe the date is February 7th. And um, we are gonna have a couple of guest instructors um, through the course here um, that I'm super excited about, but until the dates are set, um, I don't know exactly when they're gonna be, um, but we uh, are gonna do some, we're gonna learn about Hebrew calligraphy. Um, we are also going to do some Jewish paper cutting uh let's see what else are we gonna do um that's especially important that you have a sharp knife for that one uh hoping that we are going to do some mosaics also if we have space and time we are also going to do some zentangle have any of you done zentangle before mm -hmm. yep wendy's a zentangle girl all right and that's really all I had. So uh, I guess that's it. I don't have any beautiful way to wrap this up, um, but I would love to see what you did with your pots afterwards um, next week. So if you bring them back, we can share them together and everybody can see the beautiful work that you've done. And um, as far as taking care of this plant, once you plant it in here, um, it really doesn't need watering more than a tiny bit every, couple of weeks. They really do not like water. Um, you want to keep them well drained. 
Um, and the same goes for, I, I have actually not yet watered my, um, my cork plants that are up on my fridge um, because I just, they haven't seemed like they needed it. They seem pretty firm and happy. So I'm not watering them until they tell me it's time and you'll know because they'll start sagging. Okay. Debbie, are you wetting, are you wetting the soil down? Pretty ah, thoroughly at, at the beginning um, or no? At, after, um, after I put the plant in. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the one in the pot, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Go ahead and do water it thoroughly and let it drain out the bottom. Make sure that uh, you do let it drain. That's another reason for the schmutz in the bottom of the pot is to not block the hole. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, you do want it to drain completely. And then um, you can keep it in a place where it can get a lot of light would be ideal. Um, if you don't have a place that gets a lot of light, you can put it with a plant light. And if neither, you just hope for the best. Uh, during the summer months, you can put it outside. Okay. Any other questions? Lots of fun. Lots of fun. All yeah, right. And if it doesn't work very well for me sometimes, that's okay. What didn't work for you, Ellen? I'm sorry. Oh, just No, I'm just saying struggling with, you know, this, that, or the third thing. It doesn't matter. It's really fun. All right, good. Yeah. And the other thing is I very much encourage you to ask lots of questions, like technique questions. Mm -hmm. We're all at different places in our art journeys and uh, we can help each other to get better and to be, I don't even wanna say better, to be more successful with the projects we're doing. So please do not be shy about asking something, even if you think it's something simple, you think everybody else knows. The whole point of this is to be together and to help each other learn together. So please do not be shy, okay? I was just gonna say, um you can we can you can make this little thing at home um take the cutout that you gave us okay and then take the piece of paper and then i just marked i did a curve at the top i gave myself some room and then i cut that out and then i had so i had this and then i wrapped it around my thing and then it was too big so it kind of came up over the edge and then I took a pen and just circled around it ah so then I had one edge hold on you guys hang on sorry everyone's in right. class but me <laughs> and um so I cut the circle off so I had one edge and I had the top edge so then uh -huh. I put this around the top and then I measured I one edge here and then I cut just eyeing it and I could easily trim that off and make my top. Very nice. So show us your show us the bottom that you chose too. Is it is it the oh. same? No, it's I did two different sides of the paper you gave me. So here's the bottom I'm going to do and the top. Oh, that's cool. cool. That's going to be beautiful. Yeah, like like quilting almost. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> must rub off on me a little. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you for showing us that. So yeah, you can use that technique as well. Um, good idea. Anything else anybody has to add? No, this was fun. Great. Yeah, good. thank you. Yeah. As All well. right. Thank you. I had a lot of fun too. And I will see you next, hopefully next week at Tefila, and if not, um, or Friday night services, who knows, um, and then I'll see you again for us on the 7th. Have a good time, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Have a great week. Great fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome.